Destination Nightmare, the B Movie Podcast. <laughs> fantasy, there are certain facts. All right, we're back. We're Destination Nightmare B-Movie Podcast, and I'm Al, and you are... I am Roddy. And today's movie that we will talk about will be... The, I think it's 1970, Jess Franco's yeah. Count Dracula. With how, how, how do you say his name? Jess Franco. Jess, Jess is, look, because it looks like Jesus. Is it, well, it's Jesus, but he's also known as Jess Franco. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jess Franco, uh, Count Dracula, 1970. Although now, I think the version we watched was French, so it was like Nuit, yeah. Dracula, or something like that. It's probably the best print they could find. It was it was uh, released in America, and it was the reason we're watching it is because we were going to watch In Search of Dracula, but in reality, In Search of Dracula takes scenes from this movie, yeah, and inserts them into. So uh, you know, I figured, well, let's just watch this movie. It's easier yeah, to deal with than than a documentary or whatever, yeah. you know. Which is what you saw back in 1973 or four with yeah. Blood of Ghastly Horror with your dad. Which was <laughs> ghastly and horrible. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little bit better. Yeah. It's not great, but it's not boring either. You know, I mean, I'm trying to figure out what to say about the movie. I mean, it's one of Jess Franco's more, you know, lavish productions, I guess. You know, he's he's, he's he does a lot of cheap movies because he was kind of like a low budget guy over in over in Europe doing Spanish and well they were co-productions mostly and um, they spent a little bit of bu- a few bucks on this it's produced by Harry Allen Towers who had money and you know you could get better people like Herbert Lom and uh, uh, Herbert, Herbert Lom but you know a lot of Klaus Kinski yeah the rest of them are you the usual players, you know the, you know Maria Rome who played Mina. That's that was, uh, that was uh, his wife. Uh, oh wow! Towers' his wife. Uh, uh, Soledad Miranda who played Lucy, right? She played Lucy. Yeah, played Lucy. She was like, Jess Franco, Jesus Franco, the, his muse. She died like soon after this movie in a car accident. Which was sad because she was very interesting and pretty. Uh, Jack Taylor, who played um, Lucy's boyfriend, he was in a bunch of Franco movies. He's a, he's a, he's done a lot of Europe. He's an American who moved to um, Europe and did a lot of Franco movies and other things too. He's one of the ones that's still alive. You know, Herbert Lom, you know, played Van Helsing. Uh, Paul Muller played the doctor at the mental institution. And you know what? I forgot to look it up. Who played? Who played Harker? Was is not Edmund Purdom, is it? No, it's not. Uh, it was. Uh, where was it? I can't no. think. I can't remember his name. Frederick Williams. Fred Williams. Okay, Freder- right. Frederick Williams. Yeah. He did other. He did other Franco movies. Franco is like. He after this. Around this time, maybe a little bit out. He started his movies started getting a lot sleazier. Yeah. You know, and he's infamous for taking like a horror movie and editing it. Like as a as a straight horror movie, then kind of a sexy horror movie, 
and then adding, in some cases, porno footage and making it a hardcore movie. So he's very, he's an infamous director. He did about 200 or more movies. Wow. And I'm, I'm, I can't believe that Christopher Lee didn't know what he was getting into when, when he made some of these movies. But I guess, the, I guess you know, the money, the checks didn't bounce, so that was more yeah. important than. And, you know, I read something that Christopher Lee actually turned down the part of Donald Pleasance played in Halloween, and he regrets it. I just read that the other day. I was like, wow, oh, he really? turned it down. That's pretty dumb oh. of Christopher Lee. Yep. Well, maybe he was just tired of doing horror. Yeah. Or, or, or he, regrets, he regretted it, though. He said, it's too bad, yeah. but Donald Pleasance did a great job. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah he sure did. So anyway, I remember reading about this movie back in Famous Monsters. They were bragging about this is the most faithful uh, adaptation of Dracula. Uh, I've never read the book, but I've watched enough of these movies. Yeah, you've seen enough of the movies to know. To know, but I still don't know which is the most faithful one. Now you, you know, you've read the book, did you or no? Uh, parts of it. You didn't read uh, it's okay. a long book, and and sometimes in those earlier, it was like a Victorian or Edwardian times. Sometimes they spent a lot of time trying to create a mood and uh, you know so they would spend like pages describing in minute detail how things were and and, and uh, uh, feelings and emotions and you could hear like a spider scritching across the and it's like oh Jesus get on with the damn story even H.P. Lovecraft who I love he could get so wrapped up in Maybe describing sure. things to the point where you kind of like you, you you're getting do uh, woozy and and sleepy from reading this. Like, oh, wait a minute, what am I reading about again? That's a, you know, maybe it's just my lack of comprehension because I'm a slow reader. Or are you? Are you a, I mean, see, I'm not I'm not a great fiction reader. I'm more of a nonfiction reader, or I want information. Are you a good fiction reader? I mean, do you? When you I read used these? to read fiction all the time. Like Burroughs. I, yeah, Burroughs and Howard and, and Lovecraft. In fact, those are my three favorite authors. But other things, science fiction. I go to and haunt the science fiction section of the library and fantasy. Tolkien. Tolkien's another one who writes endless paragraphs of minutia, which are like, just get on with the damn story. But then over the years, especially when I started getting the computers and you know trying to learn about art, I started to do more, not technical, but non-fiction stuff to learn about things and so now I kind of, I'm I got a lot of like science oriented books yeah but uh, and and fiction but mostly uh, science oriented books about dinosaurs and drawing uh, paleontology stuff like that See, so, I, re I read stuff when I was a kid but it either went over my head yeah. Or it didn't make the impact that the visual movies did, you know? Yeah, exactly. And a lot of times, like reading Burroughs or reading the older pulp stories or, or books like or trying to get through Frankenstein and Dracula and stuff, um, they use words that were no longer common. So I'd constantly be going to the dictionary, too, to look up. What, is, what the hell does Eldritch mean? Right, <laughs> yeah. right. So what, what's the somnambulist? What the hell? So that kind of like also slows and stymies you. Uh, you're down, and then like the first time you read science fiction, you know sometimes they'll invent words, mm -hmm. and then you know you go to look it up, and you know, and you, you until you sort of get the what the genre is doing, and and and, and know when to or oh, that's a made up word. That's part of the story, or that's a real word I don't know. It, it, it can take a while to adjust. The to one that I certain. remember was uh, when, when uh, you know, um, I was in the. It was it was a store that had department store and a supermarket. It's kind of like the early Walmart. Walmart. It was called Treasury in, in, yeah. in South Florida, and they had everything in the front. They had newsstand, blah blah. They had a book section. And that's where I got a few Conans, but they yeah. had. A clockwork orange paperback and it stood out because it was orange right you know it just stood out for me so i was looking through it and in the back they had a glossary and anthony burgess like invented a whole new language yeah. or something you know and i was like how the hell are you gonna read this without having to go and yeah. look up all the words or i whatever. tried reading i had the same experience i tried reading this 
and I kept like flipping back. What the hell's a droog again? And the, you know, it's like, what? and it just slows you down to the point where it's you know pointless. It's much better when they do that and they they sort of put the the definition in the in the as you're reading it rather than you have to stop. It's like damn footnotes too. Oh, you know, yeah. reading, and then you got to go down and look at a footnote if, if they put it at the bottom of the page. Sometimes they put footnotes at the back, or like you said, they have a glossary. I mean, I don't mind a glossary because that kind of like if you're reading it, like Burroughs had a lot of glossaries in his books. But he like he if he said you know the uh, a saber toothed tiger you know called a tear rag or whatever, then you kind of like knew what it was, and then you would flip to the glossary, so it's sort of like. You know, some guy went to the lost continent and like wrote down what the words meant and then brought it back with him. But if you're constantly having to flip back to the back of the book and say, "What the hell's a tirag again?" <laughs> it loses. It loses the momentum. You know. So, you know, I remember I just brought back a memory when I was in high school. We had an English class and they had us do a book report on authors, and yeah. everybody paid, and I picked one on Burroughs. And for some reason, the first line of that I spoke cracked everybody up because they were they were like, and I was like, and I didn't feel bad about it. I kind of enjoyed them laughing at, at me or, or at Burroughs or whatever. But is it true that Burroughs went to a girls' school? Because I remember I reading know. that. To be honest, he might have, but I don't know if he. I'll have to double check that. That'd be something interesting to look up if he went to a girls' school. Yeah. I know he was in the military. Okay, he, I'm gonna look that up again before I get bad. If I remember, I got in trouble. I mean, I didn't get in trouble. I got laughed at. I mean, after that, it was okay. But people thought it was the funniest thing, and I wasn't really embarrassed. <laughs> for no, of course. Oh, not, you didn't go to. Didn't. I didn't give a well, crap. Basically, that sounds uh, wild enough to to be true. We'll have to look it up. Yeah, we have to look that up. You know. Yeah, but uh, he, he was in the cavalry. He was out west with Indians, and, and I don't know if he fought Indians, but he was involved in. I think looking for uh, uh, Geronimo or something. something was something he really? Famous. Yeah, some famous thing. He's um, uh, uh, in cavalry. He loved horses and riding. That's why a lot of his uh, heroes have that military, militaristic. Or yeah, who, yeah, they were all like captains and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Except Tarzan. Yeah, Tarzan was. Well, he was a lord, though. Yeah. Let me look up Edgar Rice Burroughs, see if I can do it real quickly here. Here's another interesting one that I found out the other day from watching the YouTube video. Did you know that um, that um, he was, H.G. Uh, Wells was a real, um, anyway, he, I'll put it, I'll make it more succinctly, succinctly, which will, which will, which will actually fit perfectly within the parameters of this uh, <laughs> a bit shoot. Did you know that he wrote a book called The New World Order? He did? No, I did not yes, know Yes, he that. did. The guy showed it. No kidding. So he was one of those guys back at the turn of H.G. Wells. I had no idea. I know H.G. Wells. Wells, not Burroughs, Wells. Yeah. H.G. Wells was some kind of Fabian... Fabian, know, exactly. Fabian, yeah, that's the word. Group of people who had uh, globalists. Uh, the, yeah, they had this uh, thing that you know only the smart elite people. Yes. Uh, you know, needed to direct the the unwashed masses. That's and that exactly kind of thing. right. <laughs> I didn't know Wells was yeah. involved in that. This is what's going on in the turn of the century. Right. That's Wells insane. and. And uh, well, this is some famous writer, uh, Alfred Lord Tennyson, I think. Tennyson was okay. All right. Yeah, he was. They were in favor of eugenics. That's it. You nailing it. You knew uh, that. I didn't know that. Eugenics. Yeah, that's uh, the other famous word. That should yeah, fit well and, within and, bit shoot. <laughs> it seems that, like uh, the whole reason Planned Parenthood was started was to to start uh, reducing the population of minorities. Oh my God! Or not whites? Yeah, that comes from Wells and people like that. Yeah, they had. There's this whole, and I think there's several groups where they and they're still around, and they, and supposedly a lot of them are, are in governments or, or or at least have some influential 
uh, connection to governments, and even in the states, you know, they believe, you know, uh, the smart people need to rule the, the dumb people. And of course, they're the smart people. Mm. And they're also the ones like, oh, we got to reduce the population by. Boy, you're nailing it, buddy. That's exactly what I watched in the video. It's like, you got oh, it. You hear this and you're like, this, this, this is real. This sounds like a science fiction story. And, and it's been, and from what this gentleman was talking about in the video, this has been going on since the turn of the century. This has yeah. been thought of, but <laughs> yeah. oh god. But anyway, you know, getting back to. Uh, Getting back to Bram Stoker, he didn't write much, did he? He wrote Dracula. Did he do Dracula's guest or Dracula's daughter or something like he, that? Uh, or was that yeah, part uh, of the storyline of the book? No, I think he, he wrote... I think there was a separate story. He okay. wrote some horror stories. But he wasn't one of the, uh, the... He wasn't involved with Robert E. Howard or... He wasn't part of the Arkham House or anything like no, that. No, no, none of that stuff. I think that was... Um, that was American. American, yeah. Stoker little, was British, right? Yeah, he's Bram Stoker is British. I think it was a little before. Okay. Uh, but he, I have a book here somewhere of some other stories by Bram Stoker. One is like called uh, "Horror from the Heights," about people who climb up a mountain and encounter invisible, carnivorous beasts that like surround you and suck you dry, or so like. Devour you crazy. Yeah, yeah, some some crazy, and I think that's uh, that was based in part on evolution and and how you know the the uh, if the Earth produced life form, wouldn't the the sky produce uh, life forms? But then because it's air, they'd be invisible to us. And all, yeah. You know. all yeah. Right. yeah. But at any rate, um, was it okay? In the back of my mind, I remember, and maybe this wasn't a book. This was a this was a, a, a movie. There was something called Varney the Vampire. Yeah, Varney the Vampire. It was a it was a I think a stage play. Was that before Dracula or after Dracula? I seem to remember that name or that that book. Uh, I th I think that was concurrent. Concurrent. Or... Okay. Let's see if we can look it up. I mean, because the, the, the whole idea of Dracula is, you know, Vlad, Vlad the Impaler from, uh, you know, Transylvania or whatever, that fighting off all the, the hordes and stuff like that, and he, you know, and I don't know how that, I don't know how that kind of led into the mythos of Dracula being a vampire. Yeah. And there was also... The other vampiric storyline was that Elizabeth Bathory or Batory or whatever, who yeah. supposedly uh, bathed in virgin blood to uh, stay young. Yeah, to stay young. And I don't know if that's true or not. I've heard these things yeah, all my that's life. True. That really happened. She's a real person. Wow. Uh, she would kill. It was all villager girls. She would kill them and bathe in their blood. And then she started killing Animals? Uh, no. the daughters of noble women, of nobles. Oh, boy. And that's that's when she got in trouble. Yeah, I would imagine. And because she was a uh, of royal or nobility or whatever, they didn't kill her, but they did sort of lock, uh, block her in into like a, the floor or a, a couple of rooms in the castle. They literally sealed her up. Wow. And then I think they would push food through a hole or something like that. Wow. Crazy yeah. stuff. But I guess those are the roots of uh, Dracula, I would imagine. Yeah. You know, where, where Bram Stoker, maybe the other ones where Bram Stoker got his, uh, his uh, you know, ideas or whatever. Now, and, and I don't remember in the novel, did Drac was Dracula able to turn into like a wolf or into animals? Yeah. He, he could turn into uh, different creatures. Okay. A wolf. Besides the bat. Yeah, the wolf and the bat. And I think there was something else. Okay. And uh, that scene where all those... Uh, st there's a scene in the movie where all the stuffed animals seem to come to life. So it's like he had some kind of control of things that were dead. Right. 
or something weird. Let's see, you know, well, he's the Prince of Darkness, and a lot of people equate him with. I thought, I thought Ozzy Osbourne was the Prince of Darkness. <laughs> That's the current. The Prince current of Prince of Darkness. of Darkness. Okay. But anyway, so anyway, going back to the movie. Okay, it starts off like the usual Dracula. Harker is in a train, and he's going to see. Harker's like a real estate guy, right? And he gets contacted he's, by Dracula. Yeah, he's a lawyer. Working for a firm, and uh, um, get the the firm gets contacted by Dracula because he wants to move from Transylvania to London. London, yeah. and he requests someone come down and bring the papers and stuff. So Harker's like a junior lawyer or whatever, bringing the papers down. So he shows up in town, goes to an inn, tells people tells the people that that work there about his. And and he's warned by the maid not to go because of you know it's the night of Saint George or something. Yes, all the yes. evil is going to happen. Saint George's night, which I I mean I think that's in from the book too. And I, what it is, I don't know why Saint George's night means. I evil. thought it was like Walpurgis night or something. Yeah, it might be the same. Oh, like Halloween, we're like Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Halloween is there's several holidays where the veil between. Uh, the living world and the dead or the spirit world is lifted and things can pass into each other's worlds or something like that. So I, th I think that's what St. George's night is. Okay. So anyway, he goes the next day, he gets on a, he gets on a stagecoach and the stagecoach will only take him to Borgo Pass or something like that. Yeah. And again, he's warned by another guy, hey, you know, you sure you want to go there? You know, it's St. George's night, you know, Stuff might happen. He's like, yeah, yeah, I don't believe in any of that stuff. So, yeah. so then when he gets to Borgo Pass, he's dropped off, and then another coach comes by, picks him up, and it's Dracula taking yeah. him there. Yeah. Which is the same as the, uh, I think it's the same as the Bela Lugosi movie, right? Doesn't does Dracula drive him back to the castle? Yeah, I think so. I think because he, Dracula has no servants. Yeah, just the brides. Yeah, just the brides, and and. Uh, so Dra I think Dracula picks him up to I'll, I'll eye him out or make sure he gets there or something. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. so he shows up at the castle, and you know Dracula you know shows him to his room or whatever. They discuss buying Carfax Abbey, I think it is. Yeah. And the Harker tells Dracula it's really in bad shape, and Dracula's like, "Well, I need a change of pace." Yeah. I need, I need a new scene, new scenery. Yeah, I need new blood. I'm tired of all these gypsies or whatever. I'm not getting any younger. I'm getting older. But he does get kind of younger as the movie goes along. But yeah, and that's in the books too. As Dracula uh, moves to London and feasts on people, he rejuvenates and gets younger. And then while while um, Van Helsing's talking to him, he sees uh, Lucy's picture, Lucy and Mina's picture, and he gets like, right. "Hey now!" You know, he gets a little Dracula. Yeah. Whatever. A little bat boner. <laughs> a bat boner. <laughs> hey, Robin, I see the... No, no, no. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh, boy. And Dracula tells the story of the Dracula family fighting the Turks and all the people that invaded and killing them all and, you know, blah, 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 and all that stuff. So, uh, let's see. So Harker sees people outside of uh, Dracula's window. I guess it was people with coffins outside. Uh, and then he and then and Dracula takes Harker to his room and locks him. Right, locks him in. And and then and Harker's like freaking out or whatever. So you know. And then, I think then he cuts the scene of a woman at the castle crying for the baby or something like that. Cause well, I remember that scene. I remember that scene of the Dracula and the Bella he's one. He's all freaked out and weird, and then he gets all kind of woozy and collapses, and then collapses, he wakes yeah. up in the cellar, and the brides are there. That's right. They want to, like, uh, bite him. Yeah. And suck his blood, and, um, or as they say, their kiss. You know, they he, he's a strong one. There's, uh, there'll be enough for our kisses or something like that and then Dracula comes and like he's mine yeah and they're like oh we're so hungry and he points to a screaming baby so they they run over grab the baby and then run away and so the implication you know, was that Dracula got on the baby or something yeah Dracula got them the baby to, so they could feast that's pretty disgusting yeah that's like <laughs> 
and then the woman's crying for the baby and stuff like that, yeah. you know. So then, um, let's see. Uh, then, 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 then Harker sees his neck bitten. Right. But I guess it was by the dra- The bride's got him, or was it Dracula? No, I think Dracula. It was Dracula bit who bit him. Bit him. But he didn't kill him because he still needs him, I guess. To yeah, he, he, he yeah, apparently in vampire lore, if you get bitten and some of your blood's drained, you're under Dracula's control. Oh, yeah. If you're bitten... And you're dead. And all, he drains all your blood. Yeah, you're dead. But back as a vampire. But he still, did he, st- I, he still needed Harker to... See, I seem to remember there's a scene, which isn't in this movie, but is in other movies, where Dracula gets a ship and sails to London. Yes, that was cut out of the movie. That was cut out of, that's not in this movie. Cut, it no. cost too much money to do. Yeah, because uh, vampires can't cross over running water. Right. So what Dracula did is he had him his coffin put in a shipping crate and it uh, put on a boat to sail from uh, Transylvania guess, to London, right? Yeah, yeah. Tra- uh, but I think he had to go up the Dan the river to like northern Germany, which meant the ocean and sail. And in the meantime, he he gets up out of the ship and he kills everybody on board, and the ships like comes into harbor. Uh, with everybody dead or nobody on board. Yeah, that that was in Nosferatu. Yeah, and that's in that's in several of the. Yeah. That was in like uh, what's his name Francis Ford Coppola's Coppola. Dracula. I don't think that's in um, the Hammer Dracula horror Dracula. Probably not. But I remember that scene. But anyway, so Harker sees his next bite, next bit bitten, and he jumps out the window. He also sees he also see and he and no he no he doesn't jump out the window he. He he goes out the window into another room and he sees coffins in right. the other room, two coffins in the other room, and then I, I, and then he freaks out and he sees Dracula in a coffin, right? Yeah, he opens point. up the coffins and he sees Dracula and he freaks out, jumps out a window, and then he wakes in, up. Uh, yeah, he wakes then up he wakes, in London, right? Yeah, he wakes up in uh, in a mental yeah, hospital. The, yeah, the asylum or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Van Helsing rooms. And then and then we start seeing scenes at at the same time with Renfield in the other room eating bugs. And from yeah. what I re- remember reading about this movie, a lot of the scenes with uh, Kinski, because Kinski's Renfield was just done with only one or two actors, obviously, because he doesn't he yeah. doesn't go and hang out with Dracula or or anything yeah. like that. He's separate from him, but Dracula telepathically Next contacts one. him or whatever. Uh, it, it, it didn't establish a connection between him and Dracula in the movie. In this movie, it did. Dracula would command him. Well, well yeah, Dracula commanded him, but before that, because he went crazy because his daughter... Oh, is that what it was? Okay, I ...slowly that part. died. So maybe Dracula was able to connect to his mind because he was mentally ill and weak-willed or whatever. So that... Because that, I don't think Dracula killed his daughter... And made him crazy because he was already crazy when Dracula moved mm-hmm. into the Abbey. So I think it was that he's just mentally weak, and then Dracula could easily control him from afar without biting him. But but Klaus Kinski equally as crazy as uh, Dwight Fry as Renfield. Yes. Even though I like Renfield, I like Renfield Dwight Fry better as Renfield. I do too because he's seen more. <laughs> he chooses the scenery better. Yeah. Yes, he does. <laughs> Yeah, Klaus Kinski, whenever Klaus Kinski does it, I get the feeling he's just acting like Klaus Kinski. <laughs> yeah, he's a creep, or was. I believe he I believe he raped his daughter. I don't know. Oh, I thought I read God. that somewhere. I don't oh, know, Jesus. but at any rate. So, yeah, they're in the mental hospital. So I'm assuming that Van Hels, I mean, Harker, came on the ship with Dracula to well, I think they, they say in the movie they found him in a river in Budapest. Was oh, that what I missed that part too? And then they shipped him back to London. They shipped him. Yeah, there was a lot of like scenes that there were like big jumps as to how you got from one to the other, and the, like a, a line or two of dialogue explained it. And if you miss it, you miss it. Yeah, and if you, yeah, and then you because a couple of times I had to rewind. I'm like, what? What? How did wait? How did he get from point A to point? Like when, like how we got from his bedroom to the crypt where the uh, yeah. Dracula's brides were. Is, I mean, it's just he he falls on the bed. Next thing you know, he's waking up. So it's like, well, how did he get there? It's just, 
you know. Or the same thing, like how did how did Hawker get to the place in England? Yeah. You if know, he just woke up in the mental hospital, yeah, and he didn't know where the hell he was. Yeah, and like, I mean, why did they, they, did they ship like, him like all messed up? You know. Yeah, and why would you bring someone who's that bad? Why would you bring them to a mental institution? I, I, assume, I, always, I assumed it was he just Dracula just brought him, but you got you, what you said makes more sense. Yeah. That they found him lying there, and they and they figured out who he was and. Well, you know, the, I guess you yeah you have to assume that since he was in town and told some people where he was and what he was doing that maybe they found him and they know yeah. and, and they you know they knew. They, they knew he was and they know yeah this guy belongs here but again I guess that's been cut out so you have to figure it out I don't know yeah, yeah. so anyway he's in London Mina and Lucy uh, go to see him at the doctor's office well well yeah the mental yeah, hospital I, yeah. And then meet, and then you meet Van Helsing, uh, Herbert Lom, is Van uh, Helsing. Yeah, and then Hawker tries to tell him about Count Dracula, but nobody believes him. Not even Van Helsing. Right, right. Yeah, Van Helsing's kind of wimpy in this one. Yeah, he doesn't really seem to believe much. Believe much or interact much with Dracula. I mean, because in the other movies, it's yeah, they were challenging Hel- each other. Yeah, you know? it takes an actor. He he knows Dracula is evil. And he. Edward Van Sloan in the other one. But in this one, Herbert Lom's sort of like sitting back. Maybe he just was, uh, you know, had a three-day shoot. and said, That's it, three days and I'm out. Very so. possible. Might have cost too much money. Yeah. So anyway, that night, Lucy is in her room and Dracula, Dracula calls, to calls her. her. And then she goes to the castle, right? And, and Drac gives her the first bite. Yeah. And then Mina finds her. Laying on the ground or something yeah, like yeah. that, and then takes her back, and then Lucy's boyfriend—I forgot what his name in the movie was—but that's the actor Jack Taylor, who was in a lot of Franco movies, and he's an American who, who did a lot of, still alive, doing Span, moved yeah. to Spain, do a lot of Spanish. His European name is Quincy B Morris. Movies. Quincy yeah. Morris. Yeah, he, he must have been in the book. I don't remember. Yeah. So anyway, they gave her a transfusion. But here's the part that's really goofy. He gives her a transfusion. But Dracula comes back again to bite her. Didn't anybody decide to be inside the room to watch? No. You know, Quint, no. you know, Jack Taylor, Quincy just stays outside the room, and then Dracula just has his way. Yeah. Because he. Comes well, I back. guess I don't know privacy. They wanted to give her. I think the thinking back then may be, well, we give them, we'll leave them alone to rest because if there's somebody in the room, the activity. Would, I don't know, but it, it's like you would think. You would think. It, Right, they would. Uh, you think that so she's got two bites on her neck that maybe right. they should watch her more closely in case something. Right. But then again, nobody knew that there was a vampire or whatever. You know, I, I don't know. Anyway, so Drac comes back again. Call, does he call her back again? Or she, oh no, she lets him into the room, and she gets yes. bitten again. He, yeah, he comes into the room. He gets yeah, he gets bitten, and then she dies from that. Yeah, and then Harker Harker confronts Van Helsing about Lucy. And then they talk about. Then they start talking about Dracula, right? And telling the story of Dracula. But Van Helsing is kind of like, I don't want to believe this is true. You know, he doesn't want to, you know. But he knows about it because he's like reads the dark arts yes. or whatever. It's a know. student of the dark arts. So at some point, Dracula. Afterwards, I think there's a scene where Dracula starts calling Renfield, and Renfield actually breaks the the bars of the window, but. I don't think he escaped. I think he just falls back down and gets hurt, and they bring him back yeah. in or whatever. Yes, he falls down uh, out the window onto the ground. And, yeah, gets hurt. They, right, they bring him back in. And uh, uh, Lucy, is it Lucy? L- Lucy, no, Lucy. No, no, uh, Mina says, I think Renfield has some answers about Dracula. So then she goes to talk to him, and then Renfield attacks her. And then uh, he doesn't kill her or anything. They, they, he stops and he gets feels. Yeah, he, he he stops because there's some scene where somebody had a, a I think Mina's crucifix flashed in the light. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. And then like Renfield saw it, and because Dracula is controlling Renfield from afar, suddenly his power weak. He like he turns away in pain, and that power weakens, and then Renfield is able to come back to him 
his crazy old self. And uh, yeah. I don't know if she tells him anything. Uh, he tells her anything, but he, eventually he dies. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Eventually he dies. They lock him. They they tie him up, and eventually he just finds yeah. him dead. Then the next day, or whenever the next part is, uh, Lucy's buried. They have a big. But then, like in the no scene after that, you see her all dressed in black in the woods, and she like calls to some girl. Yeah, there's a bunch of kids playing. In yeah. The graveyard, as most kids do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and. Yeah. Um, so they uh, take her, or she calls the one kid over, and then, you know, they walk into the woods, and you know the kid's going to be uh, dead, yeah, you know, killed. Yeah. And then Van Helsing and, and, and uh, Harker, Van Helsing finds out about it, and he goes... Yeah, he, he reads in a newspaper, yeah. girls, uh, 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 what's her name, Mina, she, apparently she's making everybody breakfast, and she brings Herbert Lom, uh his... Uh, his breakfast in the newspaper and he reads that a girl's died. So then he gathers Harker, Quincy, and uh, the other doctor who works there with him. That's Paul says, Muller. I forgot what the name is. another actor, Paul Muller, from a lot of European movies. You have to kill Lucy because she's a vampire now. So they go to her it's, coffin and she's not in it during... During, during the night. During so the then, night. Oh, he goes with them. This is where... Uh, uh, what's his name? Van Helsing. Ben Helsing goes with them, so the four of them are there, and they uh, they wait for Lucy to get in. Um, so they uh, hammer a stake through her heart, and then they use a shovel to decapitate her. Right. That, when they went back during the day, when they went at night, yes, she wasn't, she wasn't there. Back. They went back to, to during the day, and she was all bloody and. Yeah, they saw the blood on the lips. And they, stuff. They, yeah, they decapitate her, but I think they they stake the other ones. I'm not sure. Well, that's that's afterwards when they go to Dracula's castle. Okay. That's later on. Later on, okay. So then Van Helsing and uh, Harker and you know Quincy go to Dracula's castle. Uh, oh, this 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 is another scene where somewhere along the line Herbert Lom has a stroke, so he's in a wheelchair. Yeah, that's right. I, I forgot about that. He gets in a wheelchair, but then does he? Well, anyway. And there's a scene where then. Uh, uh, Dr Dracula starts concentrating on getting Mina, so he sends her a free ticket to the opera, which she goes to thinking it's from Harker. Right. And it turns out it was Dracula who did it. So and, and, Harker and and and, the th and and Van Helsing, Quincy, and and Harker are talking, right? Yeah. And 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 and, and uh, Harker thinks he sees Dracula walking around, but right. But he says, no, it can't be him because that guy looks too young. So I, I, I've, from all the blood draining, he's getting younger. And... Yeah, he's getting young. Yeah, and, and also through the course of the movie, every time you see Dracula, his hair is less gray, his mustache is lighter. Yeah, at the beginning, he looks like a frail, frail guy or whatever. Yeah. Big, tall, frail guy. Well, mean looking anyway. But Yeah. So she goes to the opera, and then Drac goes in, and then he walks into her booth, you know, her, her whatever her, they call yeah, it. Yeah, the opera booth. Yeah, yeah whatever. Her, and I guess he puts a bite on her or whatever. Yeah. So and they, the, when Herbert Lom in the wheelchair is talking to the two guys, they, they, you know, uh, they, he they, says, somebody brings an opera ticket and he goes, I didn't send her that. Yeah, exactly. So they rush to the opera, find me in a bit, and they bring her back to the asylum. Right. And then Herbert Lom says, all right, you have to, what you have to do is consec consecrate Dracula's castle, so he can't return to his coffin. So that's when they go into the castle. That's that scene where, because Dracula has all these stuffed taxidermied animals. Yeah, that was goofy, and it was like, rrr, 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 yeah, you know. yeah. So they all start not coming alive, but they all start making noises and and moving and twisting, and they're they're getting all freaked out. And then uh, uh, Quincy tries to shoot some of them and. Uh, I don't know if they're doing holy water. Or I don't. I forget how they consecrate yeah, yeah, the castle. Yeah. So then Dra you see Dracula by the shipyards. Right. And he meets some sailor and gypsies, and he says, you know, I went up a passage back to... He says Varna. Varna, which is, I think, near the coast uh, of, like, northern Hungary, or I don't know, whatever the, the Slavic country right, right. that t hits the ocean is. So he's going to there and then go down through the country to his castle, and he's in the, he's in his box, his uh, 
uh, I think the box has uh, Earth from his uh, his country. And, I think and, that's... And, and, and doesn't doesn't before he dies doesn't Ranfield tell the doctor that he's going back to Varna? I see there's yes, a scene where, right. where Renfield tells him that they start they start you know talking yeah, to him. He says one word and he goes Varna. That's it. And then That's they're it. like, "What the hell is Varna?" It's like, "Oh, it's, it's uh, on the coast of so and so, and he's probably going back to his castle." And then so Renfield he, dies after that. Yes, and so they see uh, uh, Van Helsing sends the three guys, uh, 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 Quincy Hawker and the, with the um, uh, what's the other doctor's name? Does he say, I forgot. I thought it was just the two. Did no, he send there was the a, other guy. I forgot oh, the other. No, you're right. Two. He sends the two to go Arkham back and, and sanctify the castle. Yeah. So they get there first. That's when you see them killing the, the brides, other, the brides with the the stakes and mallets. And then they're waiting in the castle on the top of the castle. Well, well no, wait, the, because wait, because there's a scene before that where Dracula shows up at Van Helsing's house. Right. Because Mina's there and he wants to put the right. bite on her. And then he confronts Van Helsing, and they have like the little, you know, like you know, the, the little space. confrontation. And then Dracula goes to do to bite or something, and Van Helsing carves like a. He actually gets up, right? I think he yeah. gets up from his wheel, and he carves like a cross of fire on the uh, on the floor. And Dracula takes off. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's I forgot that scene. Yeah, and so and then, anyway, and, we're at the end of the movie. Yeah. Uh, they the. Hawker and Quincy kill the the bride. You know, they're waiting in the castle on the top with those giant paper mache rocks. The boulders, yeah, and they're seeing oh. like a bunch of gypsies bringing the coffin right. to the castle, and they throw boulders. <laughs> Men, women, and children—they just like crush them all, you know. <laughs> they don't care, you know. No, they don't. Care. Yeah. They're just gypsies, what are you? Yeah, whatever. So then, yeah. then. Um, they they come down, and when the gypsies leave, they abandon the wagon with the the, the, the packing the crate. The yeah, Dracula the packing, packing crate, yeah, coffin or whatever. And, uh, and it's so during they the day. They're during, they're during yes. the day. So. They're during the day. So they open it up, and they see Dracula in there, and he's, he, he, like, wakes up and looks at them. And so instead of staking them through the heart, what they do is they set them on fire. Right. And then they, as the coffin starts burning, they push it over the edge of the parapet and it falls down into the dirt and burns and and uh, I guess Dracula dies then but yeah. it's like that it's the end or fiend or fiend or yeah. you know, or question mark or whatever so yes yes uh, you know this is a much maligned movie but I kind of like half enjoyed it you know I didn't think it was that bad it wasn't that great either but it wasn't that bad yeah, it was fun. It was a good movie. It was faithful to an extent. To an extent to, to the, the books. budget, right, the budget limitations of Jeff Franco and company. Yeah, it, it was uh, moody in some parts and goofy in others. Like they had that typical uh, flapping bat on. The, yeah, yeah, it looks cheesy. Yeah, you know, it looks. And and the animals cheap. like in making noises. Yes. That was kind of goofy or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, because it's. I mean, basically, it's like, you know, they're filming up close to the stuffed animal, and and you know, like a stagehand is like moving it or shaking it, you know, and they're yeah. going in out of focus. There was one swordfish that was missing an eye. That was yeah, that was weird. In the, uh, but it, yeah, it was, it was a good movie. It had a nice, almost Hammer feel to it. Almost Hammer had better art direction. Yeah, yeah. And they looked looked a little more luxurious in these movies. Yeah, more sumptuous and colorful. Sumptuous and colorful, and Jess Franco, the director, is is in this movie. He's the uh, he's the mustached assistant in the uh, in oh, the mental really? asylum. That's Jess Franco. Yeah, so he. Oh wow, that's cool. He made it. He made. He got himself a few. He's dubbed, obviously. A lot of the people are dubbed in this movie. Jack Taylor's dubbed. Christopher Lee isn't dubbed. No. Herbert Long, I'm not sure if he's dubbed or not, but, you know, these are one of those, like, Italian, German, not Italian, Spanish, German, I don't know, maybe French co-production, so, would you, you know. dub? Why would you dub Herbert Long? Because he speaks... I'm not sure, because Jack Taylor, who was Quincy, well, is, is an American, yeah. and he was and dubbed. dubbed maybe, it was not his voice. Like his voice I, maybe something. they weren't around to do the, the post... Production. Uh, maybe. Herbert yeah, Lom might have been. It might have been Herbert Lom's voice. I just don't remember right now. Yeah. 
you know, the nice thing is that they shot in real castles, and it's not like a set. Sets are great, but when you go into the real castles and you go into the crypts and all that stuff, it does give it a creepier feel to it because you're there, you know, you're yeah, there. In the, yeah, because those rooms are castle room sizes, not giant sound stages where they have, like uh, a lot of the uh, Roger Coleman Poe. Which film, are great. You they're know. great, they're fun, but I mean, those <clears throat> castles are expansive and about, you know, like, this, like half a football field. And you can't build a castle. No. <laughs> that big. But yeah, so that that's the one good thing about some European movies is when they're in those old buildings you really get that because it's real and when, you get it, that nice feel and when you get the exterior photography it's a real castle not a matte yeah. painting yeah like in the corner movies which are all matte paintings but with their nice matte paintings i mean yeah. i have no problems with them it does give the it does give the movie a surreal feel to it but this is like there's that that matte painting of a castle by oh, the yeah. The, the by the ocean with the lightning. Oh that yeah. As used, I've seen it used. I've seen it on the monkeys, the monsters, the oh, Adams yeah. family. Oh yeah. <laughs> you got you know you know that's right, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this was just Franco and Company's attempt to uh, do a faithful track adaptation, and it's all right. I mean, you know, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. You know, it could have been worse, you know, it could have been sleazier, and I don't know if there is a sleazy version of this, but I don't think so. You know, afterwards, things got sleazier and sexier or whatever, but it's a, it's a straightforward. It, it, it's a, I don't, I think this movie came out, it was made in 70, but I'm not sure if it got released to theaters that year. It took a few years. From what I understand, the clips from this movie showed up in, in search of Dracula documentary right. before the movie was actually, actually released. Yeah, because yeah, I saw it in search of Dracula, I think in 73. Yeah. And the I'm movie, I don't think it had been released in the U.S. yet. But it but it had been talked about in Famous Monsters. Now, I don't know if you can find Ooh. some information on that or not, but I know the first time I saw it was on VHS back in the uh, early 80s. But it might have been on television before that it might have been on some creature feature shows before that but I, from what I understand it was not in US theaters in the, the, at the, the time of release or a year later or, or whatever you know? right. but um, but I do remember reading about it and I do remember seeing In Search of Dracula before you know on TV not right. in the theaters I remember seeing it on TV and, and, it, and it makes sense because in Search of Dracula was a Sam Sherman uh, independent international production and I know he was you know he would put stuff in theaters and a lot of times it would be on TV like a month or two later maybe or sometimes at the same time or sometimes at the same time with a different with a different, different title, title or slightly whatever. different cut if that yeah I'm not sure but I know I remember seeing I remember seeing the scenes with the with the uh, with the animals and the lighting on TV in 1970, whatever, four or three, on a Saturday afternoon creature feature right. at somebody's house. So I do remember that. It made an impression. Because right. I was like, oh, that's that Dracula movie that I read about in Famous Monsters or whatever. So I don't I don't know what the exact time frame is, but anyway. It's a Jess Franco movie. Take it for what it is. It's not one of his artier movies. It's a more of his straightforward movies. I like his earlier black and white movies better, but I don't mind this. You this know? was good, yeah. As a, it was a, a decent B movie. It wasn't really scary. No. Uh, and it it lacked the, a You're lot right. of the mood. Of a hammer would, version or something like that. Yeah, that you it would did get lack in. the mood. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and um, it was very and straightforward. It, yeah, and even the um, the rigid the the Dracula with Bella Lugosi that had some mood and creepy. Yeah. Oh God, but, yeah, that castle when he walks down yeah. the stairs and all that, you know. Yeah, so it's it's kind of a well, it's a. B grade movie. And it's just, the Spanish so, Dracula was even shot nicer than the uh, than the yeah. American Dracula because they worked yeah. at night where the the Americans during the day. Span and they, I think they saw 
what they were doing during the day and they kind of improved. <laughs> yeah, that's what they, exactly what they did. And then a lot of people say the Spanish or the Mexican version is uh, much better. Except it doesn't have Bela Lugosi. Yeah. But hmm. I remember seeing that and there were a couple of scenes. There's one scene where you see Dracula walking in the crypts and he has this giant black cape flailing behind him and it was just creepy something about it I can remember my mom walking in looking at this going are you scared I'm like no are you sure uh no (laughs) I was never that I remember anyway frightened by universal movies I always liked them right but I was never frightened by them maybe maybe when I was a little kid maybe if I saw something like when I was five or six but when I finally started seeing them, like later on, because they weren't show in my area, they weren't show, from what I remember. I didn't see them on TV until right. like 1970. At that point, I was already like beyond getting yeah. scared by that. But I, but I appreciated them because you read about yeah. them and they were they were real nice productions and you know. Yeah, yeah. Frankenstein was moody and creepy, yeah. but I wasn't frightened. I didn't expect Frankenstein to come at me. The thing that really always scared me were ghosts and skeletons. I don't know why. Yeah, it's funny. So like the house on Haunted Hill. Oh, yeah, that, that was over the top. Though. Yeah, some of those things creep me out. And one of the reasons because our landlady downstairs, she looked. Remember that scene in, yes, in the, I do. where the girls knock on a thing and then she sees that witch. Our landlady kind of looked like that. I tell <laughs> so you a story like, about that. What what. When I was living in South Florida, my friend used to come by every Saturday to we go to video. And one day, I had an aunt who lived nearby. And she would walk over. At this point in her life, she had had a stroke, so uh-huh. she looked a little weird. And she would just come to the house and just knock on the front, you know, window by the couch. So my yeah. friend's sitting there one day, <laughs> waiting for me. And he's sitting at the couch. I say he's just knocking on the window, and he sees her like, and he's like. <laughs> and afterwards, he always remind, he always mentioned that she looked just like the lady in, you and know, House, House on Haunted Hill. And I'm like, oh, that was my aunt Louisa, you know. <laughs> she wasn't doing so well at that point, you know. But you know, but she did like to knock on the window. Oh God. Anyway, that's... yeah, yeah. That movie, see, that movie to me is scary, but. Everybody is just screaming, you know. Oh well, yeah, it was, and yeah, that's that's uh, the the scream. I don't know. Yeah, the, the screams. Yeah. Became, uh, especially when William Castle. Oh things, yeah. It was the thing to do to like get you to shock you. It was more. See that the the Universal movies were less about shock, you know, shock scares, and more about creating this creepy movie. Yeah. So uh, usually uh, a mood. Yeah, and usually when you saw like the well the ghost, see ghosts you can't really fight against. Right. <laughs> you know, they're ghosts. But usually when they had a skeleton, it would be a, a jump scare. So it's like well, yeah, or a cat or something. Or yeah, yeah, a cat. The cat. You're walking around the cat. Meow, you know, you jump or whatever. You know, and yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. The castle was good at overusing, especially in that yes. movie that. Uh, God, yeah. That 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 trope, whatever you want to call it, but uh, at any rate, yeah, I like this movie. It was all right, you know. I I had I honestly I'd never sat down and watched all of it until today, and right. I'm glad I finally watched it. And I think it's not as bad as people say it is. So. No, it's not. It's it, it's it's uh, not stellar. No. You know if. Uh, it's not scary. It's not scary. Like Horror of Dracula has scary moments in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like polished gold. It's kind of like pewter. <laughs> okay, it's, good enough. Yeah. You know, it's it's good, but okay. So that's it. Just Franco's Dracula. Check it out. It's on YouTube. I, I'm surprised at all. Well, well, we saw it on Tubi. Yeah. Tubi is another good uh, streaming channel to have. There's a lot of. I was just I just looked on there finding this movie. And there was other stuff, and I'm going, hey, maybe we'll watch that. That looks pretty interesting. You know. So. Yeah. And beside between Tubi and uh, and YouTube, we're, we're good as far as you know, yeah, pretty much yeah. as far we're as pre- stuff. So pre- pretty much anything. But as yeah, as long as the, the quality is good, because sometimes like you'll find a movie. That you'll Even find. on Tubi, sometimes you find crap quality. 
Yeah, you find, and that's that's a shame, you know. That's the, I mean, uh, you know, you've seen some movies, and you would see them even back as a kid. I remember, where it's like a night scene, and the screen you can't see is anything. basically black, and you may see a couple of medium gray streaks, and you don't know what the hell's going on. So the, like, other, oh. the other the other thing about some of these movies is, yeah, the bad quality, which makes everything looks like it's under a, a gauze. Yeah. And then the other thing about these movies, this movie looks like it was shot in 4.3, but sometimes these movies were shot in widescreen, and when they came on video and you never saw them before, they never bothered to pan and scan them, and a lot of the action is, like, outside. On either side, right. And and it's, like, really makes for it even more, makes the movie worse. Yeah. Like, there was a Just Franco movie called The Screaming Dead, and it was out on video. And I remember watching it, and it was, like, this is a mess. What's going on? I can't see. And yeah. then my friend got a widescreen of it, and I was like, okay, I get yeah. it now. It's yeah. a little bit better because I actually yeah. see what's what going, going on. on. But the worst is is some when they use some places, instead of doing a pan and scan to see right, right, the action, right. they would just keep it in the center of That's the That's exactly what they would do, yeah. So you, sometimes all you would see is like a person's hand moving or... Exactly, or, si- or, know, or, two, noses, or two noses talking to each other. <laughs> I was like, what the yeah. hell is this am I watching, you know? They didn't even bother to pan and scan it. They just got a print yeah. of it and put it on video and go here you go with a nice big clamshell packaging so it looks like yeah. it's really great and then it's like really and then they would list some uh, some famous actor yeah starring John Travolta and he made he's in like a scene in the background <laughs> oh the worst was which was was not a video but it was a midnight movie that back in the 70s there was midnight movies you know and right. we were like old enough to drive and we were allowed to stay out late. right so they would have midnight movies at the theaters, and a lot of them were rock shows, like uh, right. Song Remains the Same or Yes Songs or whatever. Yeah. But they had some movie, and I wish I could remember the title of it. And I remember watch, you know, hearing the the promo for it on a station, and it was like, oh yeah, at the at the Silver, what was it? The what was the name of the theater? It was in Miami Beach. Uh, the the Shore Theater. I don't remember what it was called, but anyway. See, Linda Ronstadt, you've never seen her before in this biker movie, whatever it was called. And we were like, really? There was no Linda Ronstadt in that movie. It was like somebody <laughs> just pure BS, you know? And I was like, whatever. It might have been that, it might have even been that Billy Jack movie before oh, Billy God. Jack, uh, Born Losers, which is actually, I think, better than Billy Jack. Right. You know what I mean? But it might have been that. I don't know. But it was just like, I don't see anybody. Right. I don't see Lena Ronsa in this movie. I guess it was in her heyday when she was like Miss Hot, Miss Miss Everything or whatever. But yeah, there's a lot of that stuff going on, yeah. you know, which is fun. You know, but um, but anyway, yeah. So we like Jess Franco's Count Dracula. Um, yeah, so we'll figure out something to do yep. next time. time. You know, something... I don't know, something Easy. in the something. I can't say something a little bit better, but something different. <laughs> something different. Happen. But in the meantime, while we're gone, Roddy wants you to watch more movies. Movies, 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 movies. movies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, all right. A little, a little echo, a little homemade a little echo e- there. A little you. special effects there.